Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Julia Hayes. I'm one of the associate pastors here, and it is my joy to welcome you to this service of worship at The Vine, an online campus of Wrightsville United Methodist Church. We know that God is going to meet you in this time of worship, and so we are so grateful that you are joining us. We're so glad that you're here, and we'd love to have the chance to reach out to you. So, if you don't mind, take a moment and either click the link that's in this video description or scan the QR code that will show up on your screen in just a few moments. There you can let us know that you're here and tell us how we can be praying for you. Now I invite you to take a big, deep breath and let's prepare our hearts for worship. Please join me in our opening congregational prayer. The words are found on your screen. Let's pray this together now. Holy and loving God, we thank you that you know us fully. You see our hearts and know our desires, and we can't keep any secrets from you. In this time of worship, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts through the breath of your Holy Spirit, so that we can perfectly love you and fully praise your holy name. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. Christ beside me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, King of my heart. Christ within me, Christ below me, Christ above me. Never to part Christ on my right hand Christ on my left hand Christ all around me Shield in the strife Christ in my sleeping Christ in my sitting Christ in my rising Light of my life Hello, I'm Eunsoo Gang, one of the associate pastors here. It is a great joy to lead us in prayer today. Before going to prayer, I want to remind you that Pastor David and our youth mission team are on the mission trip in El Salvador. Please keep them on your prayers. Please join me as we pray together. Holy God, on this day that you have created, we gather together to receive the words of hope, to sing the songs that touch our heart, to pray deeply for your presence. We recognize these things are given to us as a gift. Your blessings abound in our lives, and with grateful heart, we lift our voices in gratitude for this beautiful gift from you. You claim us as your own and make us your children. We thank you for calling us into your holy family by grace through faith in Jesus. We thank you for the blessed opportunity to clothe ourselves with Christ through baptism. We are called to be witnesses of Jesus, revealing God's healing presence in all our lives. No walls, no fences can block the movement of the love of God through Christ. Help us to demonstrate your character, your values, your spirituality, and your way of treating others. Compassionate God, we also lift our voices as our hearts cry out our concerns for those who are unwell, grieving, and feeling lost. We especially pray for these whom we now name with our voices or in our hearts.
Hear our prayers, O Lord. You have heard our cries and our shout of joy. Make your presence known to us again through your mercy and your love. We humbly offer this prayer in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is kingdom and the power and glory forever. Amen. As we have time to offer our gift and heart, I would like to remind you that you can give to the Ministry of Riceville United Methodist Church through our website, smartphone apps, and through mail. Let us continue to worship God. I'm Pastor Eun Seo. I'm so happy to have this time together. So today, I want to introduce my family member who um, has been living with me in my home. Well, I have my parents um, whom I love and respect the most in the world and I really want to introduce them but they are currently in my home country, South Korea, so I can't introduce them in person. So, I would love to introduce another family member today. Did you already know that? Yes, this is my family, Miki. Miki, say hi. Hello, nice to meet you all. I'm Miki. <laughs> yeah, um, I have been living with Miki for four years and he is a super special uh, part of my family. Sometimes he is like my daddy and sometimes he is like my mommy. And I don't have any siblings, so he is like a lovely brother to me all the time. Well, I can talk to him anytime and I laugh with him. See, he is always smiling. And we watch Netflix together and I can share my day with him. Likewise, I believe you have wonderful family who care for each other, have fun together, and share precious memories together. And you know what? God also has a big family too. And guess who? Yes, you and I can be a part of God's family. In the Bible, the Apostle Paul wrote a letter to Colossians telling them about God's family. He said, when we believe in Jesus Christ, we can be sons and daughters of God. We are not just visitors or guests. We are part of God's family. It is so cool, isn't it? God loves us so much. God wants us to be a part of God's family. So God sent us Jesus to make it possible. So when we believe in Jesus Christ and accept Jesus as our Savior, we become children of God. We can talk to Jesus everything and we can feel joy and love and care from Him. God cares for us and God protects us because God loves us so much. So today, let us remember that we are part of God's family. Just like me and Mickey and just like your family, you can feel love and joy and care from God. Remember, we are all important members of God's family. Let us pray. Loving God, 
Thank you for making us your sons and daughters. Thank you for always being with us. Help us to grow in your love as your children. Help us to love our family more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Doug Lane. I'm senior pastor here at Wrightsville United Methodist Church. And it's truly an honor and a privilege to be able to br bring today's message to you. Today, we are continuing in our sermon series on the letters of the New Testament. And this week, we can go back to the Apostle Paul as he's written a letter to the Galatians. And uh, let's see what, uh, what he has to say. And, um, and see what we might mine uh, for us today. So I'm picking up in chapter 3, beginning in verse 23. Paul writes, Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we're no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. As many of you were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ. There's no longer Jew nor Greek. There's no longer slave nor free. There's no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you're Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. My point is this. Heirs, as long as they are minors, are no better than slaves, though they are the owners of all the property but they remain under guardians and trustees until the date set by the Father. So with us, while we were minors, we were enslaved to the elemental spirits of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent a son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, this week, Tom Cruise released the seventh movie in his Mission Impossible film series. Now, I haven't seen it yet, so no spoilers here today, but I'm really looking forward to it. Apparently, it's getting great reviews. And if you're not familiar with it, the movie series is actually based on an old TV show from the 1960s that involves action, espionage, international intrigue, and of course, saving the day through the most unlikely scenarios due to the daring and clever work of the Impossible Missions Force, or IMF. Well, the hero in our Bible passage for today is not a fictional character played by Tom Cruise, but rather the very real person of Jesus Christ. He is the one who makes the impossible possible. And today's letter writer, St. Paul, explains why. Listen to his words. Now before faith came, we were confined under the law, kept under restraint until faith should be revealed. You see, that's our problem. We can't possibly draw close to God because we can't jump through all the hoops. This is what Paul means when he says we are confined by the law. Earlier in the same chapter, Paul calls the law a curse. A curse? Now why would he say that? It sounds sacrilegious, but under the law, we were all failures. Keeping the law perfectly was an impossible mission. It simply couldn't be done. Not a single one of us could possibly fulfill all the law's requirements that are laid out in the Bible. The law provides for us a standard that is unattainable, or to use our word for the day, impossible. And even if we were able to keep the law without any deviations, we would probably be guilty of spiritual pride. We would conclude that we were better than everyone else. And that might be the deadliest sin of all. 
It's a lose-lose situation. That's how growing up under the law made St. Paul feel. Constrained, he says, confined, which then led him to feeling unloved and unfulfilled, under a curse. Instead of making him more loving and more accepting, it filled him with self-righteousness and resentment toward others. It gave him permission to be cruel toward those who had different beliefs than he did. If you aren't familiar with Paul's backstory, he used to persecute the Christians before his conversion. He even watched as a young man named Stephen was stoned to death for his Christian beliefs. But then something amazing happened in St. Paul's life that made him realize he wasn't a failure, that he wasn't a loser, and that he certainly wasn't unloved. He experienced the living Christ on the road to Damascus. He heard Christ say, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Saul was the name he went by before he became a Christian. And something broke within him. Suddenly, he wasn't unlovable anymore. He writes in today's text to the Galatians, but now that faith has come, we're no longer under a custodian or a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. Did you hear that? In Jesus Christ, we are all children of God. We're not losers. We're not unlovable. In fact, because we've met the Lord, we're really quite beautiful. Now, we simply need to believe that about ourselves and about everyone we meet. Antonio Sanchez was only five years old when he was sent to a Mexican prison for juveniles after allegedly murdering his baby brother. Tony's parents, who had beaten him with chains and tortured him with fire, deserted him and disappeared after telling police that he was the killer. In prison, other inmates taunted him with the word murderer and sometimes abused him. He had to fight for food at the age of five. No one seemed to care what would happen to Tony until Carolyn Coons, an American professor, heard his story. She battled bureaucracy and a corrupt prison warden for almost three years to secure Tony's release and adopted him at the age of 12. But her real struggles had only just begun. Somehow she had to meet the needs of a boy who still stuffed rolls into his pockets because of his past hunger issues, who lashed out at others because of his emotional scars, and who seemed enticed by every wrongdoing because of his unbridled life. Tony Sanchez was not initially drawn to his new mother. In fact, he seemed more drawn to trouble than to anything else. He accused her frequently of not loving him and taunted her with, I won't ever obey you or anyone. But Carolyn never stopped grilling those juicy cheeseburgers that he craved, and he never quit hugging him after his ugly words, and she never ceased rescuing him from fights. Carolyn had almost despaired of Tony ever bonding with her, but then Carolyn got a big surprise one day. Tony made an unexpected speech at his middle school graduation. In almost a stutter, he said, I want to thank my mom for adopting me and bringing me to the United States. And then with tears streaming down his face, he yelled out, I love you, mom, I love you, I love you. Why did Tony love the woman who adopted him? It was because he could look into her eyes and see himself as someone of worth, as someone of beauty. You and I both know that this is the greatest and most fundamental need of all humanity. Something or someone has told us that we are unacceptable, that we are unlovable, that we are unworthy. In St. Paul's case, it was the law. And when we have a low opinion of ourselves, we have a tendency to lash out at others. We have a tendency toward the destructive and the inferior. What we need more than anything in the world is to look into the eyes of Jesus and see ourselves as we really are, as sons and daughters of God. So here's the good news. We are God's children and we can begin living a Christ-like life today. 
St. Paul says, but now that faith has come, we're no longer under a custodian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. There's neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Do you get that? No matter what, you are not inferior. No matter who you are or what you've done, you are beautiful in the eyes of God. Notice what St. Paul says. Now that faith has come. That's really important. This is not a simple sermon on having high self-esteem. No, we can truly believe in ourselves only if we believe in God. And we can truly see ourselves as beautiful only if we see our reflection in the eyes of Christ. And if we take that step of faith, then tremendous powers are unlocked within. Once you take that step, it doesn't matter whether you're Jew or Greek, whether you're slave or free, male or female, black or white, Hispanic or Asian. It doesn't matter if your degree is from Harvard or if you dropped out of school in the sixth grade like my grandmother did. You know who you are and you know your life matters. I like something that Dr. Robert Schuller says in his book, Reach Out for New Life. He notes that Michelangelo attempted 44 statues in his life, but he finished only 14 of them. You're familiar with some of them. David, that stands in Florence, or the Pieta at the Vatican, or Moses, which is also in Rome, just to name a few of his best-known works. But the 30 that he didn't finish, they're interesting too. You can actually see them in a museum in Italy. For instance, there's a huge chunk of marble from which he sculpted only an elbow or the beginning of a wrist. Another shows a leg, the thigh, the knee, the calf, the foot, even the toes. But the rest of the body is locked in that chunk of marble. It'll never come out. Another reveals a head and shoulders, but the arms and hands are still frozen inside. Could this be true for you, asked Dr. Schuller? Of all the tragedies in life, the greatest is for a person to live and die and never realize the possibilities hidden within. So true. But unfortunately, the world doesn't get it. The world is still living in a fallen state, separated from God and from each other. The world looks at us and labels us not good enough because we don't fit this week's fashion statement or drive this week's cool car or truck. You don't like Succession, Ted Lasso, or the marvelous Mrs. Maisel? And you're not good enough. You're not wearing Gucci, Armani, or a new pair of Air Jordans? Not good enough. You don't drive an SUV, a large pickup, or a Tesla? Not good enough. You don't eat tofu, sushi, or acai bowls? Not good enough. You get the idea. If you're not in according to someone else's list, then the world says you're not good enough. What Paul reminds us of is that God loves us even when the world tells us we're not good enough. In fact, God loves us even when we can't keep up with God's own commands listed in the ancient Torah. Are you catching all this? The world says you're not rich enough or cool enough. God says, I still love you. And the law says you're not doing everything right. You're making too many mistakes. And God still says, I love you. Now, Paul says elsewhere in the Bible that this doesn't give us a license to sin all the more. He emphatically says no to that idea. But like Antonio Sanchez, who grew up in that Mexican prison and was then adopted by a loving mother, or for that matter, like any child you know that disobeys a parent, but then later realizes that they want to please that loving parent, we too are drawn to live a life that pleases our ever-gracious God. In fact, you know what God says about you? The scriptures tell us you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139 says, I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. 
Wonderful are your works that I know very well. And you're created in the image of God, according to Genesis 1. So God created humankind in His image. In the image of God, He created them. Male and female, He created them. And He says, you're accepted. In Ephesians, we read, To the praise of the glory of His grace, by which He made us accepted in the Beloved. And you are beloved. Jesus Himself says in John 15, As the Father has loved me, so I've loved you. Abide in my love. And you're a new creation. We talked about this just last month in 2 Corinthians. So if anyone is in Christ, there's a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. And you're blessed. Ephesians again says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Shall I go on? You're a child of God. My favorite chapter in the Bible, Romans 8, says, The Spirit testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. And you're of great value. Jesus says in Matthew 10, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your Father's care. So don't be afraid. You're worth more than many sparrows. And finally, you're a friend of Jesus. I do not call you servants any longer, he says, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I've called you friends, because I've made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. In John 15, 15. These are just a few of the things that God says about you. So what you may have thought was impossible is actually possible. You are loved by God no matter what. I want to give you an invitation today. I want to invite you to look into the eyes of Christ by faith. I want to invite you to see reflected there the beautiful you that you were intended to be. And then I want you to go forth from wherever you're watching this video to live a dynamic Christ-like life. It doesn't matter who you are or what your background is, you can begin living as a child of God right now. That is your mission, if you choose to accept it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we thank you that you love us unconditionally and that you prove that love over and over again, especially in your Son, Jesus, who went to the cross for our sins. And through faith in him has given us eternal life. Lord, help us to follow in his footsteps, to live a Christ-like life. Lord, we ask this in his most precious name. Amen. Go forth in peace, knowing that you are a child of God and that God loves you no matter what. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind blow at your back. May the sun shine warmly on your face.